And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show on an afternoon where hold the fort and hold your breath were the orders of the day. And the exhale in the final minute from the garden crowd spoke volumes. Rangers file out successfully. Barely. 3-2 the final over the Seattle Kraken at the Garden. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios. John Giannone alongside Steve Valiquette. It was a slog. It was a game where the Rangers had trouble getting the puck, keeping the puck, and doing anything with the puck. But Keandre Miller in the last half minute is able to be the hero. Yeah, a couple of things on this game. The young guys are pitching in, all right? And I think that you're trying to assess where this team is right now. But when the young guys score like this, Lafreniere has the other one that helps, it really makes you feel like you got to swing for it at the trade deadline. And this is happening. Like, this conversation's happening right now. I'm really happy for the players because if you lose this game, it's tough for upper management to swing for the fences for you when you're kind of losing confidence a little bit. You can't lose three games in a row when you have a 2 nothing lead or else management's saying, well, maybe we don't have the group. And you have to come back, win this game, and in that fashion, without having to go to overtime, thanks for getting us home sooner, <laughs> right? It's, it's really, yeah. no, it's yeah. great. And really good that the young guys are chipping in now because you need that. I've, I've been saying this all season. If the young guys are scoring with a little more frequency, what kind of a juggernaut do you have here in New York? Mm -hmm. Yeah, once is a happening, twice could be a coincidence, but three straight times, yeah. that's a storyline. Rangers will address it, but they ultimately get the win on a day where Mika Zibanejad had a hand in all three Rangers goals. He assisted on two, he scored the first, and it was uh, vintage Mika. He's got three now from that spot mm -hmm. over the last month, and it's just a wired shot. But what he does is he speeds up everybody's process. And once again, this power play is a weapon because they are able to play catch across the slot line. So the red line that we have that goes right through the ice here and stops at the top of the circle, when the Rangers are on the power play, every three times they pass it across that line, they get rewarded with a goal. Now it's not easy in the NHL to get it across the line, but when you pass as well as they do in the high ice here, with Panarin and Zabanajad getting it in his wheelhouse, this is what it does to the goaltending positioning. You're just down early, you're trying to get across. Kreider does a splendid job to get out of the way there, but it really does transform the way that everybody's trying to kill, and they're trying to pregame for the Rangers, knowing what they're gonna do. The Rangers keep changing it up, and they're modifying, Right now, Zibanejad's running hot in that spot. If he runs cold, oh, big deal. We put Panarin over there. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, they, they, I, we haven't seen a power play like this. Mm -hmm. Not in the seven years that I've been at this desk. Yeah. So, uh, yes, it's something to get very excited about every time they're on the power play. I'm just waiting for the next chance. They always get a chance, which means they always leave with confidence, even if they don't score. Yeah, I remember when Henrik Lundqvist was sitting at this desk, he said it's the best power play the Rangers have had since the Yarmir Yager years. That's right, he said Which it. is saying something. He, he said it must be true. Yeah, that, yeah we always <laughs> said that. 15 years ago in that case. 17th for Zabanajad, 12th since December 15th. That gave the Rangers the lead. They made it 2 nothing as they've done in each of the last two games as well. And that came also off the stick of Mika Zibanejad, and it was only the iron that got in the way before Alexi Lafreniere tucked it in. So we actually called that in the first intermission. I Give us credit, right, John? I give you credit. We, nice we talked, oh, but we knew it was going to be, if you keep making that same pass an option, you're going to get broken plays. Broken plays are plays that, okay, it goes off the post, and then it ends up on the weak side of the ice. Smart for Lafreniere. Now, when Zibanejad enters here, there's four Seattle players back, and he tries to get this through to Lafreniere, but the neat thing here is watch Lafreniere. His posture is on the puck, so now he's almost got a in-zone forecheck. So he pushes hard here, and everybody reads off of him. Jones is aware, he's able to settle it, and Lafreniere gets himself back to net front, and Zibanejad's easy to get into that route so he can open up his wheelhouse again and fire. Now this is not a scoring chance from out there, but it is off the rebound. And Lafreniere does a great job. He settles a very difficult spinning puck with a lot of rotation on it. That's not easy. You've got to tap it down to the ice. He manages it in. But again, he's aware. I thought Lafreniere was on the puck this entire game. Uh, three minutes to go, he lifted a stick in front of one of the Seattle players in a fast-moving, chaotic moment. So he's defending well. But 
Most importantly, he's on the play, and, and there's no sleepy moments in his game right now. He's really maturing. Ninth of the season for Lafreniere, first point in 10 games on that top line. So it was 2-0 Rangers. Jared McCann scored a couple minutes later. That made it 2-1 going to the third in a second period that was basically puck-dominated by the Seattle Kraken. Third period, much of the same. And with 108 remaining, Yanni Gord was able to score on a blast, a Mika-type blast yep. that beat just Durkin. That tied it at two. It looked for all the world like it was going to go to overtime, but Keandre Miller had other ideas. <laughs> Keandre Miller with a little help from Kreider. Yeah. And uh, look, off the faceoff, uh, the Rangers now are scoring much more uh, opportunities as well as goals. I think it's number 10 now off the faceoff for the season as they climb up the charts that way. But it's a, it's a perfect shot. It's a labeled shot with what could have been an interference call. And uh, for Keandre Miller, uh, once again, confidence, and being able to celebrate a goal for a young guy in that big moment, these are always springboard moments for these guys. And this game, I'm going to remember it for Lafreniere and Miller and taking a step forward because as long as these two guys, along with Kako when he gets back, and Heedle, if these guys can really fill the role, I'm telling you right now that you know Chris Drury as a president and general manager, he's going to want to swing big because you've got the star power and now you've got the support. Yeah, Rangers won 56% of their face-offs on this day. None bigger than that Mika Zibanejad win there. With 33.7 left, Keandre Miller able to score and win the game.